Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Micron Koraki or Korakai 2. I'm honestly not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it's linked right down in the description because it is something you can pick up right now. Uh, it does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Mygiron for sending this in for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, um, this is another great example of Mygiron's potential for uh, you know, machining quality. Um, it's a, it's a decent design. It, it there's a couple of things here that are just like kinda, ugh, right? It almost feels like they're using the same, um, they're using the same kind of cake mix. They're using the same recipe and just tweaking a couple of things and maybe kind of rushing a few things. And I just, there have been so many migrons that have been really close to being excellent, and it's like they settled for pretty okay, kind of good. Right? Like, it's all there, like everything that you expect in a premium knife, but it's, there are so many things now. This would have been an incredibly rare thing to see five to ten years ago. But there are so many elements that exist within this knife that exist within hundreds of other designs, uh, designs even within these super competitive parameters. So, I know that sounds super nitpicky. Bear with me. There's some things I want to point out here because I would really, I, I'm, I'm rooting for Mygiron to hit an app, not just a home run, but an absolute grand slam. Let's go ahead and measure this knife. Overall length is coming in at, it's not quite as big as you might think. I thought that, that it was going to be eight inches, about seven and three quarter inches overall. Blade length is coming in about 3.35. Cutting edge is coming in at about three and a quarter. How about some size comparisons? Just a few today up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? And last but not least, let's put it up against the up against the Benchmade Bugout. Um, obviously a somewhat similar classic knife profile. Uh, versus the bug out. It is uh, definitely a little bit longer, a little thicker, a little more dense, right? How's the action? Very similar to other Migron knives. Pretty good. Not the most amazing thing that I've felt in the tier, but uh, it, uh, it's got bearings and everything is smooth and consistent. I imagine over time it will probably really smooth out. Add a drop of 10 weight nano oil, it'll probably smooth out even faster, right? It's a front flipper only. I kind of feel like this design should have had a thumb stud on it. And it's not to say that I think every design should have thumb studs. I just feel like the way that they did this, they should have done a thumb stud. Um, you know, it's hard for me to fully accept the knife that is front flipper only unless it is done absolutely flawlessly. This is pretty good, but there's one thing that I feel like they could have changed that could have made this just work better and be more um, desirable to a larger group of people. So uh, the front flipper, uh, the, the front flipper is okay. Um, the D10 is tuned really well. It's nice and snappy, right? But there's just really nothing special going on there. Um, the uh, access to the lock bar is good. We have a nice little scallop here, and it's cut slightly lower than the other side. And then that side is also scalloped, so no issues there. So, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. This guy's about the same. Very, very similar. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Um, it's... Yeah, it's it's a, just a little bit longer than the pair of three, just a hair longer. Nowhere near as tall, obviously nowhere near the same size as the PM2. Really not going to be that big of a deal in the pocket. Let's go ahead and look at the inside here. We have a little bit of machining. Um, I like that there's actually texturing on the inside of the pockets, right? It's probably that somebody mentioned that's probably just the results of the type of machining that they do. Not necessarily like an extra step, but it's kind of cool to see. Let's go ahead and, I, I mean that, like in the unboxing, somebody mentioned that. Um, I wouldn't know because I don't work with that type of equipment, but that's good to know if that is the case. Weight. 
We're looking at 3.53 ounces of weight for 3.35 inches of blade, so pretty darn good ratios, especially considering it's full titanium. Balance isn't right behind the pivot, but it's in an okay spot. It's still kind of right there where you're gonna have your finger in the standard grip. I guess that's pretty much the only grip, right? So not much to complain about there, pretty good. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Let's go ahead and check the pivot here. T8, all the rest of the body screws, no, 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 I'm wrong. These are actually T8. All the body screws are T8. The lock bar insert screw is a T6, but that's fine because you, there's no reason to take that out unless you, you know, are switching it, in which case you probably need to contact them, I don't know. But yeah, I, it's extremely rare that you would ever need to take out the lock bar insert screw. Um, there's one hidden screw underneath here holding in the pocket clip. My guess is that it would be a T6. In any case, this is not going to be a difficult knife to take apart. Uh, just make sure you have the proper tools, a place to put your hardware, and you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. Blade stock thickness coming in at 125 thousandths, which is par for the course for my drawn little bit thinner than what I consider the exact median of the knife hold, which is 135 thousandths, just in my experience. All right, let's move on here. Meat and potatoes time. This is a good looking knife. Very simple, classic profile. Very, uh, you know, very Chinese production 2023, right? Um, there are an absolutely massive number of knives that take on a similar aesthetic. Now, they have executed well here. We have an M390 blade with pretty good uh, cutting geometry. I do not know how it is heat treated. I carried this for right about four days in a row, uh, cutting normal stuff with it, right? Pa paper and cardboard and tape and stuff like that, right? And didn't take it out and abuse it or, you know, do any comprehensive testing or anything like that. And I don't have the equipment to measure Rockwell hardness. I'm going to guess that they're hitting this at the similar 59 to 61 that most other Chinese production companies hit it at, right? But there's no way really for me to know. Fortunately, there's a lot of other people in the community who can do stuff like that. Uh, but it is M390. It is titanium. And the machining quality is very much there, as is the case with pretty much everything that Migron puts out. They're, they're pretty impressive, honestly, if you're not familiar with the company. Uh, titanium backspacer, full milled clip. I do like the continuous diamond textured pattern. That's really, really nice and something that I personally appreciate. I think these come maybe in a few different colors. Honestly, the only one I've ever seen is blue. Sometimes Migron does that where they're like, here's our new model, and it comes in this very oddly specific color and nothing else. Um, there's a lot of things that make me want to tell my girl, like, just slow down a little, just slow down. Let's not be pumping out a new model, like, every second. Like, if you're going so fast that we can't offer options and we're missing little tiny obvious little things, which I'm going to talk about here, um, then maybe we're just moving a little bit too quickly. This is, this is going to sound a little bit harsh because the truth is this is a really good knife and it's a good value, right? But I'm going to use it as an example. Um, so, yeah, apparently you can get a blue one and I would assume that somewhere, surely, surely it's not just blue. That's weird, right? I mean, it's usually you do like the typical bronze, blue, and standard stone wash, right? Uh, but the only one, <laughs> legitimately, the only one I could find was the blue one. So... The uh, blade, very simple, classic drop point blade that has been bead blasted or glass blasted. It kind of has an overcast finish on it. The spine has been crowned, which is really nice. Uh, a ton of like little tiny fit and finish steps, right? We've obviously gotten to the point where these are kind of cookie cutter. Like, you know, this is the formula that people like, and so they're just kind of apply all, but it works, right? Ergonomically, it feels good. The edges are nicely knocked down. And even though it kind of looks like you have some confining areas in here, it's pretty friendly. All of the edges are really, really nice. The pocket clip is nice. Everything's good. I mean, functionally, taking this thing out, using it, right? It was a good experience. It was very easy to manipulate, even as a front flipper, right? I mean, I can even, I think I got to the point where I could front flip it with the side of my index finger on my left hand, right? So it's, it's fine. It's tuned properly. I want to choke up here, but I can't because of this. This is like a very enlarged sharpening choil. And what it's doing here is it's just eliminating 
potentially extra cutting edge. Now that's kind of a silly thing to say because best case scenario, we might get another, you know, eighth of an inch out of it. Uh, so it's kind of silly. Uh, realistically, I, I think what, what went wrong here is we, they needed this ledge, this ledge in the titanium. They were just like, we absolutely have to have this ledge because well, because I I don't know, because reasons, I, I'm not really sure. Like, delete this, right? A lot of people, including myself, I don't like being fully dependent on a front flipper to deploy the knife. In some situations, I might not want to deploy it this way. Even though I've gotten used to it, it's still substantially more likely that I will throw my knife across the room on accident while I'm front flipping. I'm also much more likely even doing this as my full-time job is like sitting here flipping knives in front of a camera, right? I'm still way more likely to accidentally cut myself. So I do like an alternate means of deployment most of the time, right? Unless the front flipper te uh, front flipper thing is designed so perfectly, right? That it's just an extension of my hand to be able to manipulate this. This is good, but it's not that good. Um, I, uh, I feel like removing this ledge would have allowed for them to, they've already got space back here carved out for, they could put little thumb studs right here and I watched it as I sort of move this around, that space where the thumb stud would be would only run into this ledge right here before it finally falls into the closed position. If you remove that ledge, not only do you have room for thumb studs, but this whole area is dramatically smoothed out, right? Keeping the cutting edge the exact same length that it is, but also creating a position where you can, you know, effectively choke up if you want to. So the ledge as it is, this area right here, there is no benefit to it whatsoever. It is simply a choice of design, right? You could say, oh, it follows this line. But if you were to shave this off, you could also end this line right here and the whole freaking thing would still look great, right? A lot of times these sort of straight handled knives do really well. The design, the, the, the benefit to the design is that you really can get right up behind the edge. Here, it's not so much the case. I mean, yeah, you can put your finger on this ledge, but there's a, it's, it's a pointy ledge. So it's not comfortable to actually have your hand here. I feel like this is just a big missed opportunity. It's, there's about half an inch of space on the end of this knife where it's just useless, right? Now, you know, again, I realize that's very overdramatic, right? Maybe I've been reviewing knives too long. I'm getting real nitpicky here. This is still very good. I got to drive this home because I feel like people are going to aggressively miss what I'm saying and, and, and they're just, they're not going to listen to this part. They're just already going to start to complain. This is still very, very good as it is. It's extremely good. In fact, you know, it's still designed better than a, a lot of things on the market, right? I mean, it's it's nothing new. There's nothing new going on here. This is a combination of a million different elements from a million different designs that we've seen over the last, at least the last five to 10 years. And the profile itself is the most classic profile ever. Look up knife in the dictionary and it's basically this profile, right? So it's kind of frustrating to see little things like that, right? In order to accommodate for just obscure ledges. I, I don't I, I don't get it, right? The rest of it is fine. And honestly, this position here, even without being able to get right behind the edge, you are still in a pretty optimal ergonomic position for pretty much anything, right? It is it is silly to complain, but then again, it's like, come on, you know, go the extra mile. Like take, take some time to sit down and think like, where are people gonna want to, you know, put their hands to manipulate this, right? Or to use it or whatever, right? So, um, fit and finish. As per usual, very, very good. There's nothing here that looks wonky. Everything is fine. Final cutting bevel is good, nice and even, right? Factory cutting edge is sharp. It's not the thinnest thing behind the edge, but it'll slice, it'll slice continuously. Edge feels great. Um, I would say my favorite part of this is the diamond texture titanium. They do this really, really well. Good size, good traction, meaningful, you can hear it. It'll easily grate the dead skin on my finger, right? You can actually see it kind of coming up. Um, but it's not so aggressive that it's annoying, right? It's enough to build traction when you need it, even if your hands are wet, which is, a, you know, an issue that is present with titanium because titanium tends to be slippery unless it's got texturing on it. This is nice texturing. It works. In and out of the pocket, um, even though there's no bald spot under the clip, really not a problem, right? The clip does not have a dedicated mounting spot, even though there's a screw hole there. This is nested into 
the titanium, so it does not have a dedicated left-handed mounting position, which is a big missed opportunity for not just Migron, but like every company who is just doing this right now. I don't know what, it's like they all got together and they were like, 2023 is gonna be the year that we leave lefties out harder than we ever have before. Why? Mill the spot, mill the spot. For every thousand people that are interested in the knife, you got like six people complaining that they have to look at an additional rectangle that's milled out, right? The rest of us, I promise you, don't care. It's just not that big of a deal. Or do a filler tab or something, right? Proof of this, people are still going to complain. Proof that this works is uh, in uh, thousands of examples over the last decade where they have found a way to just be accommodating and the vast majority of people don't say anything, right? You can complain under this video to be, you know, play devil's advocate, but the fact is, is that over the last however many years that we've been doing this, accommodating for left-handed people, even on right-handed designs, the vast majority of people just don't care if there's something there that they have to look at. But the benefit is that lefties can actually carry it the way that they want to. So Miguron and any other company, right? They probably don't even watch these reviews. <laughs> Mill the spot out for lefties. It's so simple, right? Um, anyways, Backspacer and Pocket Clip, both titanium, both milled. That's great. Nice value there, right? Uh, I like, I, I kind of like that the screw heads stick up just a little bit. I kind of, I don't know why. I mean, it's consistent. It's not like these are not screwed in all the way. It's just the way that it is. It looks fine. Doesn't catch anything, right? Steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. That's great. I like that Migron on, on these pivot collars just did sil or on this pivot collar just did silver and not that weird gold color that they were putting on everything. Um, I think that looks much better. I think that this knife would look really, really good with a bronze anno or a stone wash. I also think it would look excellent with not a flat anno or a flat finish on the blade. I think a stone washed or semi reflective finish would look really good, or even like a polished anno. I mean, you know, their prices are extremely good, but it was just like the same sort of flat, nothing anno over and over again. I'd, I'd like to see that mixed up. It's cool to have that periodically. I think that's fine, right? Or offer options within the same line of model, but it's like everything. It has flat blue or flat, it's, periodically we get a different color, right? It's just kind of the same, you know, it's the same cake mix over and over and over again, right? It's just slight things have been changed. So anyways, doubles as the over travel stop, that's fine. Um, the uh, the detent, I feel like is tuned pretty well. I think we talked about that. Lockout on this guy is completely and totally solid. Lock up is coming in at something like 40% with no lock stick, no pivot lash. Like I said, cons consistent in here. A little bit of a shh, 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 shh. I think that'll smooth out, especially one drop of 10 weight nano oil, right? Get some compressed air, blow it out, right? Or take it apart, take it apart, wipe it off, and put the nano oil directly on the uh, face of the blade in combination with the detent ball. That's what you want to do, right? It'll smooth out, um, but it's it's good. No detent lash, or I'm sorry, no pivot lash, no detent lash, and the centering. I'm gonna look from two angles here. Centering appears to be absolutely perfect. Great. What's the price? 189 bucks. Pretty good deal. Assuming it's heat treated at least the same way that we see other, you know, high-end Chinese production M390. Yes, ideal, you know, for M390 is like 62. I think some people even say all the way up to 64. Eh, I don't know. It's already a pretty brittle composition, right? Every now and then I get people who are confused and they think M390 is a tough composition. Uh, no, it, not only is it not tough, it's, it's actually pretty brittle. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty notorious for being chippy at its optimal HRC, right? Uh, optimal is a range, but I think 62, maybe 63 in some you know situations, but even at 62, it's gonna be a, pretty chippy, right? So a lot of these companies, but that's if you're getting like a custom one, right? A lot of these companies are hitting at a 59 to 61. I would like to see 60 be the base. 59, you just don't get the benefit. I know people think that it's always oh, just one point. It is an exponential change every single 
level of rock wall hardness. And no, I'm not exaggerating. That's actually how the scale works. From 59 to 60, right? The difference there, when we go 60 to 61, it is an exponential change. Massive. It is not a static increase. 59, not all across the board, right? That's another thing people get confused on. Also, everything under 60 is bad and everything over 60 is good. No, it depends on the composition, right? What hardness the composition should be at to yield the benefits it was meant to be, that, that, that it was meant to yield, right? For M390, I'd like to see a 60 at base, you know, and then if we got to go, you know, 60, 61 for this level, right? And you got to spend more money to get it higher than okay, right? But right around the 60 to 62, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's generally what I like to see. I don't like to see it below it. But I don't know what this is heat treated at. I don't have that equipment. It's expensive. I don't know how to operate it or anything like that. I'm just a guy with a camera mount and a phone and some knives, right? And I like to carry them the same way everybody else likes to carry them. I like to use them the same way everybody else likes to use them. Um, so have to assume that they're hitting it in the same spot. Sorry, long rant there. 189 bucks, good value, good execution materials, right? Decent design, good ergonomics, all the same stuff. I've seen this a million times and so have you, right? Unless you're brand new to the knife world. If you're brand new, this might look like the coolest thing you've ever seen, right? If you've been around for, I don't know, just like a few weeks, you've probably seen this about a million times. It's cool. It's good looking. And I was really, really impressed with it right out of the box. The more that I handled it, when I carried it, I was like, man, this is, it really feels like more of the same. And, and there's a couple of little obnoxious things missing. Um, my Giron is capable of like producing really incredible stuff, but I feel like they're kind of going down the same route that a lot of companies do and they're just moving too quickly. Slow down, take your time on the design, right? Don't settle for a B minus or a B plus of a design when you can, you know, potentially make something really amazing. An A plus design is, you know, not doesn't exist because it's different for every person, right? But just a couple of things missing here that could have made this great. That being said, I want everybody to pay attention to this. Go down in the comments and find the people complaining that I'm reviewing this unfairly, right? And then you can give them this timestamp. Uh, that being said, the truth is, is that this is a recommendable knife. It is good, right? You gotta give credit where it's due. Good materials, good execution, good fit and finish, good functionality, right? All of that's there. It's a good knife. And the price is pretty darn good. 190 bucks. I've seen better, but it's pretty good, right? So I can't complain too much. I'm going to put it in my recommended knives playlist because I think it's a good size, right? People looking for a nice premium knife. This is a good one, right? I wish that it had thumb studs. I wish they didn't go with that ledge. I wish they had some different options, right? I wish it wasn't the same thing over and over and over again, but it's good. What they, what they made here is good. Not great, but good enough to be recommendable. So anyways... Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.